What is going on, YouTube? This is a new series. This is, uh, it's the commute series, but it's the business series. So, what I figured is I would do a series on starting and running a business. Um, I've been doing it for since 2003 so I've been doing it for 15 years and um, I support my family uh, with the business that I started back then and uh, I figured you guys you know I would try to share some of the knowledge that I have uh, over the 15 years so that you guys if you decide to start your own business maybe you can learn from some of the mistakes that I've made and and uh, kind of know what you're getting into. So the first, of course, um, the first episode, I kind of want to touch on starting it and getting together a business plan and get into why. Why, why do you want to start a business? Is it to supplement your income? Is it to replace your income? Uh, what are the realities, you know, that 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 you need to be thinking that that are going to hit you, you know, that you that you don't think about? Well, um, first of all, like I said earlier, and you guys probably know if you've watched my earlier videos, I own an IT company, and what an IT company is is we provide technology products and expertise to companies that. That, that don't have it. So if they don't have an in-house IT guy, they can contract my company to, to provide the technology and the services. That is the, the heartbeat of my company. Now, we have multiple, like I was talking in an earlier video, streams of income, but that, that is the heartbeat of my company. Um, we have the storefront where we sell products to people who off the street, you know, residential customers or, you know, people that come in. We also work on our shop is located in our, in our uh, location here. So if I have to bring a computer back or that's where my office is. So I'm giving you kind of a layout of the way my business works because I want you to know where how I set mine up because yours may be completely different. The first thing you need to you need to do is according to what you're going to be doing, do you need a location or not? Do you can you run it from a vehicle? Can you run it from home? Um, like if with a photography business a lot of a lot of photographers I know they don't have like a retail location or a commercial location they run out of their house they have like their display set up and they have people come up to their house and or they'll travel and go to the, the weddings or whatever um, I could honestly run the IT portion of my business mostly without you know a location like that because as long as I have my laptop and as long as I have a car to get to the client most of my business clients most of my enterprise clients have never most of them have never been to my retail location or my office so we have that because it's a stream of income the the retail and the, the other but anyway do you need a location? Now, a location will provide you a couple of things. Number one, you're able to put a sign up. And for some reason, which I get it, it goes back to olden days, but if you have a location, it it adds a bit of seriousness to it. A lot, a lot of people, you know, it, it does give you a lot of, like if you're on a busy road and people see that sign every day commuting to work, it kind of gives you that that authentic, you know, they, they trust you a little more because they, you know, you're you're here. Uh, you've got a location. Um, 
it also provides a home base. So when you're at work, you're at work. When you're home, you're home. That's it, it gives that divide a little bit more because a lot of people they'll they'll run it out of their home and they never quit working because they don't know where that divide is. Well, you know, I'm always working. Every person that owns a small business or owns a business and works for themselves will tell you you never you're never off the clock. So if if it's three o'clock in the morning and one of these plasma machines goes down up here at at, at, uh, at one of my clients, guess where I'm going to be? I'm going to be getting my getting my pants on and I'm going to be getting in the truck and firing it up and rolling up here at three in the morning. You know, that's the way it is. Um, so do you need a location? Where does that location need to be? Okay, what you need to do is kind of do a population map. And I've, I've kind of simplified my way of thinking, uh, you know, you don't really have to put all of the thought that people put into it. Because if the big businesses are there, chances are the population's there. So where I put my company, there are restaurants, there are, there's a Lowe's, there's a Walmart, there's you know those companies have already crunched the numbers they have they have they've crunched the numbers and they have decided that they can make it so if a company the size of Walmart or Lowe's can make it chances are a small business can if you if you've got a good product and a good service to sell now a smaller niche town can work too but you got to be careful You've got to you got to make sure that that the demand and the the um, the demand is there. And because if you're if you're if you're in a little town like there's a little town here off to my right, it's a cute little town, but the big businesses haven't haven't invested in it. You know, it's got a couple of gas stations. It's got a Dollar General. You know, it's got, it's just a small kind of, there's not really a lot of traffic. If you talk to a lot of people around, if you mention this town, they don't go to it much or drive through it much. So you've got to really, you know, you if you go into a niche town like that, then you better have the population in the town or right around the town to support your, the business you know to, to, to do well you can travel and do it but it's according to what business you're getting into now what businesses can survive in that that I have noticed a hairstylist I'm telling you that they can survive anywhere I mean you, they can put a little a little building up and cut hair and be just fine you know I've noticed you know um, gas stations if you're starting a gas station you know and if you pick the right place if it's you know a good ways away from from um, from the last gas station and you want to provide you know limited groceries and gas they tend to do really well even in low populated areas so but a computer shop an IT company you'd better be at a hub you'd better be where the majority of the people come and in my area there are two or three hubs in the area and I put my company at one of them. I'm pointing back there because my office is behind me. I'm having to drive home for a minute and then drive back. But it's one of the hubs. Like I said, it's got a Walmart, it's got a Lowe's. It's got, you know, plenty of gas stations. It's got restaurants. I wish it had more restaurants because I'm tired of the ones there. But it's 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 a hub it's where people even though the population which uh, the, the three towns or the two towns where my business are they add up to a pretty good population but it's the surrounding area you know you've got people from from a different state coming to this so if they're here getting their lumber from Lowe's and they're getting their groceries from Walmart and and the other the other uh, grocery store 
if they're here doing their family shopping and they need a computer or if they need a, a power adapter for their laptop or if they need you know just their computer worked on chances are they're going to drop it off at to me because they're going to be back next weekend or you know they're going to be back next week because they're used to coming to this watering hole so what i'm getting at is choose, sit down and choose your location wisely have a business plan and have a have a lot of contingencies in that business plan have a lot of um, a lot of streams of income because you never know which one may save your hind end at first because that's where I got that's what I'm getting back to when you started if you are supplementing your income it's one thing but if you're replacing it if you're replacing your income unless you just come out of the gate and you've already got got clients and been doing it and kind of kind of have already started building it buy you some Roman noodles because you're going to need them um, it takes a it takes a while for people to get used to you being there and providing that product or service that's the way it is that's every business I've ever been to you know unless you're just kind of a an anomaly you better have a plan to support your family for at least at least a year uh, if you have a family or you better have a plan to survive survive somehow for at least a year you know if it's not taken off after that year you're going to have to look and try to find something different to do or throw in the towel uh, you know i see a lot of people holding on to businesses that don't make money they never have made money they don't support but they'll hold on to it and I, I don't know why maybe it's a tax break you got a lot of that that happens you know if if one if one part of the if one part of the union makes a lot of money and the, and the other part starts this little side business I, it's a lot of times for a tax break or something else or you know they've got the luxury to play around but if you're starting it to, to replace your income, you don't have you don't have the luxury to play around. So you better come out of the gate swinging, and um, you've got you've got a lot of people a lot of people. And I being in the computer repair business, that's not my main business, but it is part of my business plan, and it's part of what we do. It pays for our lights, it pays for our location, it pays for all of the office expenses. We don't really make enough off of it to make a living, but it's a good supplemental stream of income to pay for the overhead so that what comes in from the commercial and the industrial side can go further, you know. So it is a needed stream of income, I, you know, I've, uh, it's an aggravating, <laughs> it really is the most aggravating part of my business because anytime you're dealing with the public that you don't know, you know, any, anybody can come in off the street, um, you know, you don't know what you're dealing with and everybody has different attitudes and everybody has different ways of looking at stuff and, and there's some people out there that I find weird and they find me weird, and, you know, which we, we, we always take care of the customer we try to give them you know what they need and that's that's the that's the number one key take care of your client as long as your client takes care of you if your client respects you and and you know wants to pay you then take care of them because they're they're your they're your bread and butter but if a client comes in they don't mention to pay you they just want to ask you questions and pick your mind. You know, that they, they've been in two or three times, never offered to pay. <sighs> that's that's not a... We'll get into that in a different episode. Probably the next episode. We're going to... Good versus bad clients. But I don't want to get into too much to that right now. But get your, get your business plan down. 
if you need it, pick a really good location. Pick the best location that you can afford. You know, uh, if 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 you can afford a different town over and it's got more more pizzazz going on and more businesses and there's more traffic, go to that town. Don't don't put it in a town that's that's more dead unless your business plan calls for that. Uh, there are there are differences and every, this is a overall general you know um, but your location number number three find out what what jurisdictions you're going to be in now you can be in a, a town a county and the state and of course you've got the feds but sometimes you can put your like my office i purposefully put it just outside of town limits because now all i have to deal with is the county the state and the feds i don't have that other bureaucracy to deal with now sometimes you can get away with that sometimes you can't sometimes these towns and they go their town limits go out to the point of you're out and standing in the middle of a cow field and you're still in town Luckily, where I put mine, you know, the, there's not a town jurisdiction. You're going to want to visit Town Hall. And don't be surprised if the lady behind the counter don't know what the heck you're talking about. Because she's a, she works for a bureaucracy and she's not, uh, you know, a lot of people don't start businesses, to be honest. So don't be surprised if you have to explain to her what you're talking about two or three times and she'll probably still get it wrong. Now the courthouse at the county, they'll probably know more about what they're talking about. The state, you're gonna to wanna to set up set up your sales tax if your state has it, and I'm pretty sure it does. You're gonna to wanna to, you're gonna to wanna to set up if you're gonna start with employees, you're gonna to wanna to, talk to them about that setting up a uh, a, uh, a an account for their for their uh, taxes the to take out you know the withholding accounts what I'm talking about and you're going to want to call your state your, your state capital and talk to them what do you need to set up I cannot stress of how important setting up the taxes are that that's an understanding what you're doing if you need help pay an accountant to help you with this this is the most important thing to set up that comes along with picking what kind of business you're going to be are you going to be a corporation a c corp you're going to be an s corp are you going to be a limited an llc are you going to be um, a sole proprietor there are benefits and there are disadvantages to to all of those what I recommend doing is finding the reputable accountant that everybody uses in your area schedule some time with them sit down and talk with them you're also going to probably have to get a lawyer involved to file if you go with corporation you're probably going to have to get a lawyer involved to file that paperwork, which the accountant should help you with. So here are some expenses that you may have not thought about, okay? The fourth thing, I think we're on four. Gosh, I'm thinking I'm driving a clutch here. I was about to put us through the window. The fourth thing, insurance. You need to find out what kind of insurance you're going to need. Okay. A an electrician is going to have to have different insurance than a person selling clothing. Um, a hairdresser may need a different, you know, plan or policy than that. So visit with your insurance agent, the one that you buy your car insurance from, or however your state does it. Um, visit with your insurance agent figure out what you need you know to, to be covered because if you have a storefront and somebody comes in and they slip and fall or you know 
get let's say you're you're an electrician and one of your employees or you wire something wrong or heck the house burns down and you didn't wire it wrong you're going to need that insurance and that's another expense that a lot of people don't that start businesses don't think about and that's what kills me about these people that that just do it on the side uh, i know a lot of a lot of uh computer computer guys in my area you know they don't do it like we do it the right way they'll do it out of their house you know or they'll go and they'll do this but they don't have any insurance so if the person had a problem or the person you know they're 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 a sitting duck for a for a lawsuit or or something like that don't make yourself a sitting duck that's one of the reasons why i didn't go with sole proprietorship because a sole proprietorship everything comes back to you everything so it's a it's the easiest to set up but it is the hardest if something goes wrong on you it will come back to you and only you okay I just left my bank that brings up a another good point who are you gonna bank with are you gonna take credit cards if you are take them all I see so many businesses that only take Visa or MasterCard they won't take discover they won't take American Express and I have asked these businesses why don't you take discover American Express and they say that the processing is too high well I'm an American Express card holder I have an American Express platinum card that is what I put everything on I put the rent to my the lease payment to my office down here um, in my office location I put all of my insurance on it anything I eat I put so you are alienating me and I like to spend money in in the local area you are alienating me from buying from you. So think about that for a minute. Over a, over a point, or maybe not even a point in interest. Okay? Processing fee. So think about that for a minute. We've got a, a uh, restaurant in town. It's kind of like a, it used to be like a, a drive-in with the roller skates and all that kind of stuff but now it's just a drive-in where you go up we walk up and get your food will not take credit cards won't even take Visa or MasterCard and I'm sitting here thinking why why are you that stubborn you could be making a lot of money and it's a it's secure money that's what that's what I don't get okay you have a lot of businesses a lot of old-timers a lot of new timers that are that for some reason they don't want to take credit cards okay if you have employees handling cash that's the worst scenario you can be in because the cash can be counted wrong it's very rarely ever dead on 100 percent checks of course have have their drawbacks is the are the funds there you know only only if a person's bounced a few will the e-check things even work so if you take a check you you better trust the person there's one form of I, there's one form of payment that the employee doesn't touch and if you get an approval code and have asked for ID and they are who they say they are you're guaranteed your money and you're guaranteed guaranteed for it to be correct so I don't care what you guys say taking credit cards are a good idea because most people don't carry cash and if you're gonna take them take them all don't just take two because 
if you are in competition with somebody that takes Visa and MasterCard, and that's all they take, I'll give you an example. In my town, there are three pizza places, okay? And pizza, they're all three good. You know, they're, one is excellent. It's, it's ran by my, by one of my buddies. But you know, you can't eat pizza, you can't eat it all the time. You want some variety. The other is Pizza Hut. And the other is another local chain that's, you know, just a little bit cheaper pizza. But Pizza Hut does not take American Express or Discover. Okay? So automatically, in my mind, they're ruled out. Even though I have Visa and MasterCard in my wallet, I don't like to use them that much. Okay, because I like my American Express Platinum card and I like the fact that I can get my statement and I can tell everything that I've used, you know, everything I've ate, everything I've bought, everything that I have done that month. And I don't want this rogue Pizza Hut, you know, every once in a while I get a craving and, and just go ahead and do it. But look at how much they're missing out. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. So if you're gonna take all of them, take them all. If you're not gonna take credit cards, which I don't recommend, then don't take any of them. Now, getting started, it's very easy. Square, Square offers an excellent, and I would recommend, I would recommend doing it. Um, Square offers little to no upfront cost to take all four credit cards and they offer a point of sale solution. So if you're if you're starting and that's 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 a very intriguing, you know, way and that's that's another thing. What financial software are you gonna use? QuickBooks is the most popular. It's very good for small business. I highly recommend it. Um, on the front end you could use Square or you could use QuickBooks front end. It's more expensive up front, but you know, it, it syncs and it works with the back end software very well. And then it comes to what serve what are you gonna need to get your business going? What expertise do you bring to the table versus what expertise do you need to farm out? Okay. That gets to what I do for a living. You're gonna need phones. Chances are you're gonna need a back office computer registers if you're doing retail you're going to need software to run your business at least so do you need somebody like me to come in and set all that up and help you with it if you do get you an IT budget that's another thing you may not because most IT companies don't won't work by the hour most of us want a an agreement, like a maintenance agreement to keep your system up because most of us most of us apply to the um, don't wait until it's broke before you fix it. Preventative maintenance, don't let it break. And because things always break when your IT guy's on vacation, things always break when, you know, Christmas break, Thanksgiving break when I'm on another when I'm out with another client you know things always break when it doesn't need to break so and to have a relationship if you if you're going to depend on my services hey if you're a technical guru forget this don't forget me talking about this but if you're going to require a a uh, technology specialist to help you run your business then they're gonna, the good ones are gonna want a maintenance contract. They're gonna want so much per month or so much per quarter from you so that you're worth it to them. So that's another line item, another expense that you may not have thought about. So in taxes, insurance, are you gonna need, are you gonna need somebody like me? Are you gonna need a contractor to help you build your business out? build your location out 
are, are you leasing it or are you buying the building? Chances are you're leasing it if you're just starting out. If you're leasing it, who is who's going to pay for the remodel? Because chances are you've not found a spot that's going to, or a, a, a location and a build out that's going to work perfectly for your business. So who's going to do it? Are you going to do it? Or is the is the the leasee going to or the leaseor going to do it? You need to be upfront with the person you're leasing off of. You need to have a contract written of who's responsible for what. You know, that's 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 a that's a very important thing to do because if you sign the lease without that being written, then it's not going to go well for you because he's he's just going to hold you to the money you pay and that's it. But if he's responsible for building the location out to suit your needs, let's say you're starting a pizza restaurant, who's responsible for the for the sprinkler system? Who's responsible for the uh, the uh, the ovens and all the exhaust? Who's who's responsible for making sure the place is up to code? Is it you? or is it the person you're leasing from? Now, if it's him, chances are you're gonna to have to sign a pretty hefty lease because he's in business too, and he's gonna to have to make money. And if you're, not, if you're not committed enough to sign a big lease, then he's not gonna pay for it. But if you pay for it, that's great because then you can negotiate with him a shorter lease. That way, if the area or for some reason it just doesn't work you're not held to this big lease and that's another that's one thing that a lot of businesses get into they end up being lease breakers and you don't want to be a lease breaker because you have no <laughs> it, it's tough to get out of a lease so don't don't take that pen in your hand and just sign it without thinking you know remember I own property I am a leaseor I'm telling you from a lease source point, have all these things drawn out. Have it on paper that who's responsible for what. Usually the, the lease or they want you there, they want you there, they want you to do good. They want that space leased out. They don't want it to sit there empty. So um, yeah, just just go in that go into that with with a mind you want to make sure that you have some kind of document preferably legal document drawn up by a lawyer that you know and and you may want to throw that in with the with the lawyer that's doing your corporation or if you have one you know that's going to do that but anyway that's that's part of starting a business um, it's it's rewarding it's if you do it right it's very rewarding make sure that you have enough for a year uh, because chances are unless you're just extremely lucky or extremely needed in the area you're not going to come out of the gate swinging you're, uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna have immediate success but don't give up on it. Give it at least a year if it's a good idea, um, because chances are, if you do if you do it right and you have a good product or a good service, word of mouth, word of mouth, people are going to start talking. You're going to be the go-to when anybody talks. Like, you know, you're going to be the go-to guy. You know, I've actually heard this firsthand, standing behind the lady at the supermarket. You know. Or my computer's tore up, you know, where where do you take yours? Well, I take mine down to the, and they mention my business. I'm not going to mention my business because I don't want this channel to be about that. I want it to be about helping you. I want it to be about teaching. As I said before, this channel, the, my inspiration for it was, you know, I have a little boy, he's four. You know, if something happened to me right now, what would, I want him to, 
I would want him to be able to come to this channel and at least learn, you know, learn, learn certain things, you know. So that's the inspiration behind this channel. Um, there are a lot of things that will get you out of nowhere, but you've got to be prepared. You, that's what this video is trying to help. I'm trying to help you do, be prepared. The taxes and the setting all of the legalities of, like the, the Corporation Commission here in Virginia, anyway, every year there's a fee for that. And a lot of times they're envelopes for some reason. When they get in their mailbox, they just look generic or something. And you don't expect them because they send you them once a year. And <laughs> I have I have lost them or them just get put to the side. There's little things like that that you've got that you've got to know, you know. And now we have on the calendar to be looking for state corporation commission you know, papers. Um, but yeah, you want to get it set. If you get it set up right the first time, and make sure you file. Make sure you file the paperwork that's needed. Even if it's zeros. Even if you didn't do anything or didn't have any employees for that quarter or, or whatever the time frame is that you need to file, you want to file that paperwork. Um, so that's how they work you know it's on a trust system so uh, they expect you to file and file correctly but um, yeah there's a lot there's a lot more to it than just throwing a shingle out and, and saying hey I'm in business you know, there's there's a lot going on behind the scenes, a lot of expenses that, you, like you said, you may not know about. Who's paying for the sign? You know, is your is your location going to have signage? Is the leasee or the leaseor responsible for that? There's another thing that needs to go into that document. Okay, um, you'll want to have policies. You'll want to follow those policies, the return policies. Um, your website, you'll have terms of use. You'll have, you know, even, even, we've even got like um, fire policies. Um, not firing, but, well, we have those too. But like if there's a fire in the building, if there's a robbery, if there's, someone's sick if there's you know if there's you'll hear it you'll hear on the big you know like the big companies you know you'll hear code words on the on the PA system well guess what you're gonna have to think those things out too especially if you have a location that's doing retail or you know a place where people can come in you're gonna have to think about those things you know, and that's a lot. I, I see a lot of small businesses that don't think about that. You know, and you know, it may be just jot some things down. You know, if um, but but you're just because you know what to do, don't mean your employees will know what to do. You know, I know that if I know the sheriff's office number in my head, but does my employees know the sheriff's number in their head? No. On our phones, we have it programmed in. All you've got to do is hit this number and hit dial. Hit one number and dial. That's in their training manual. You know, if we have somebody come in and have a heart attack, you know, here, this is the, this is the, you know, of course you can dial 911, you know, but, or you can also hit three and dial, and it's gonna, you know, and we set ours up to where one is police, two is fire, three is three is uh, rescue squad. So that's in their training manual, and they have to read that training manual before you know we'll put them on the front floor because they've got to know how to handle everything, you know. And they're not going to have time to come get a manager if somebody's having a heart attack in the lobby. You better not be coming to get me if somebody's having a heart attack in the lobby. You better be pressing that number three. But anyway, a policy manual, and 
starting a business, you've got to really think about every different scenario. You've got to think about, well, let's, let's say, for example, like if you want to start a moving company, there are a lot of things, there are a lot of things, a lot of ins and outs to that industry, you know, that you have to get. And there's special insurance you have to get. I'm not sure. I'm not in the moving industry, but I know I know somebody that's tried to do that, and you know they didn't really realize that it was that in depth that they had to um, they had to get all of the all of these extra things you know taken care of before they can haul people's stuff around, you know. And that's, it's according to what you're getting into, you're gonna to have to really research what you need. And that's, like I said, you need to talk to an accountant. You'll probably need to talk to a lawyer. I'd recommend it. And you're gonna to have to talk to an insurance agent. And make sure that insurance agent has handled uh, your type of business before. Um, because if they haven't, they may not know exactly what you need. So that's that's something maybe to get the lawyer and the and the insurance agent if they haven't dealt with it before. But you really want to pay attention to the details. Don't just go in and trust your insurance agent to get you the right insurance. Make sure he or she got you the right insurance. You're the business owner. Ultimately, it comes down to you. It don't come down to them. You know, if you have somebody, if you have something happen and it's not covered by your insurance policy, your insurance agent is not gonna be the one that they come after, it's gonna be you. So you had better, you had better educate yourself on what kind of insurance you need and how you need to set yourself up. So, well, that's it for this episode. Um, this is pretty much, setting the business up uh, you I know business plans are beat to death you need a business plan um, I'm not going to go into that I don't know what business you're going into I'm trying to make this like a broad you know setting up a business um, because you may not need a location you may need a car you know and you're going to need um, are you going to put it in your name or are you gonna put it in the newly formed LLC or corporation's name? If you're sole proprietorship and you use that car um, for personal and business use, now you've gotta have a log and you've gotta check with your state and your feds to see how much per mile that they will, that they will give you off on your taxes to drive that car. But if you put it in a corporation's name and you use it only for business, that's the easiest scenario because now if you bought the car, now you can depreciate it over certain years. Talk to your accountant. I'm not an accountant. I listen to my accountant. But you can depreciate. Uh, there's a depreciation schedule on cars. If you leased it, uh, you can pretty much, that's where leasing really it's the only good thing about leasing is the way I figure it. You can pretty much count the whole sum of your payment off. Um, talk to your accountant. I've never leased a car. I've always bought them and depreciated them, but uh, my accountant has pointed out that leasing is a, uh, uh, a an attractive option uh, for businesses. So. If you're going to do that, if you're using your personal car, you're going to have to do a log. You're going to have to, you know, do all that kind of stuff. Like if you're a photographer and you use your your minivan for hauling the kids around, and then when you got a photo shoot, you throw the kids out and throw your camera equipment in the back. Well, you're going to have to log. You're going to have to log. And there's there are apps that you can put on your phone that are they're really easy for that. Uh, paper and pen are kind of cumbersome and a lot of times when you need to make a note or need to log it you can't find it but you've always got your phone with you so I recommend maybe looking at one of those I've never used those because my company 
vehicle, my company vehicles are company vehicles, my personal vehicles are personal vehicles. This truck is a personal vehicle. I'm driving it to work right now because it's, they're giving snow today. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not, you know, it's my personal vehicle. I, I'm not going to try to sit down and nitpick every little thing. And, you know, I'm, I want to get my family here safe and I want to get them back home safe. So I picked the truck. Um, but I normally I ride my, my, my company car, which is, it's a company car. Every mile put on it is for business use. You know, I may run by the grocery store and pick up groceries on the way home, but for the most part, that car, or for 100% pretty much, that car is used for company business. It goes home with me because I may get called out at three in the morning. So you got to think about stuff like that. You've got to see how you're going to structure your business, and you've got to talk to the people who know, who know and have set up a business that way. So. Yeah, you can count off um, a certain percentage of meals as long as they're, you know, done the right way. Talk to your accountant. You can, there there are benefits, you know, to certain, to certain ways of setting it up. You, you set it up right and you'll be good. Well, guys, I hope, I hope this episode helps you. Um, I'm, I'm meaning it to help you. <laughs> I hope it it just just make sure that you do it right and make sure you get your taxes and your insurance and your corporation uh, uh, structure set up right company structure whether it's sole proprietorship LLC corporation make sure you get your location right if you're going to lease or if you need a location if you're going to lease make sure that you put down um, everything that's that each individuals or each uh, entity is responsible for just and and remember there are no fallbacks if you start your own business you the pup stops with you it is you so if you sign a document you better own that document there's no going crying to anybody else because if you get audited if you get you know if if like i said somebody gets hurt on your premises and you don't have the right insurance your insurance agent the first thing they're going to do is this it's you you better make sure that that policy covers that and there's no there, I always say starting a business the ceiling is removed but also the, also is the floor so there are no you know if you fall, there's a never ending, you know, <laughs> but the ceilings are, so you can go as high as you want to go. You can make as much money as the business will, as you can work and, and do, but the floor, there's no, there's no, uh, trampolines and there's no, you know, but anyway, I won't end it there. This is the first of the series. Uh, the next one we are going to get into clients which should be a really, really good, good topic to get into because believe it or not, not all clients are good clients and you're going to figure, you're going to find that out really quick. You're going to have people that, um, they're not, they don't, they don't see that they'll need to pay you. They don't see that what you do is important. They don't, they won't respect you. They, um, there are different people out there and um, I call it I've, I've found out that it's usually about 80% of your clients are awesome and that 80% is they're going to use you they're going to recommend you if you take care of them they're going to be an ambassador for your brand they're going to they're going to they're going to talk nothing but good about you and they're going to respect you and hopefully you stay in business because they love that you're there you're going to have the 20% that loathe you. I don't know why they even come through the door except just to snarl their nose and act like, you know, that what you've built is nothing. Um, it goes back to they're not happy themselves. And I'm not just talking individuals. I'm talking business owners, you know. Maybe their business isn't doing very well and they're jealous of yours. Um, 
I don't know. Um, they don't take cutting your check seriously or paying you seriously. But that's next week. That's 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 the different. That's a different episode altogether. And we're going to get we're going to get into some good stuff in the next episode. But you guys have fun. Hopefully this helped you. If you like the content, please please hit the thumbs up button and please subscribe. I'm needing subscribers bad. I want to get to a hundred before the quarter's up. So I need subscribers. I'm going to keep coming out with the content. If you like the content, subscribe and hit the bell button. Make sure that you're getting the stuff when we're coming out with it. I try to do the, the commute, which this is going to be a special commute series. It's not regular commute, but this is going to be like a four or five, six video series. I'm going to try to cover every little facet, give some stories. Uh, I find this stuff interesting myself. Uh, so uh, to, to learn about your stories, your business stories, and uh, that's what I want to do with this. I want it to be a how-to but entertaining at the same time, and hopefully hopefully you learn from my mistakes or you something that I say kind of prompts you to to sit back and think about it you know so you guys be good i'll see you on the next episode and i'm looking forward to it bye